What's up Adirondack fans? My name is Cooper Nato and I'm a DP and director based here in Brooklyn, New York. Today we're going to do an overview of the Sigma FP. just want to know about the raw features, jump to this section of the video. Otherwise, on with the review. The Sigma FP is the smallest full frame camera in the world and packs a 24.6 megapixel sensor. Its size makes it a great gimbal camera, but also perfect for building out a budget cinema camera package. When it's time to connect to the camera, the Sigma FP has USB-C and micro HDMI connections on the side. The Sigma FP has two quarter 20 thread adapters on the side to attach peripherals like a cage like this or the supplied camera strap but make sure when you're using the camera strap to monitor the tightness of the eyelids because I found when I was using it out in the field, they got loose really quickly and you don't want to drop your camera. While most people are going to use this for video, I think, it's still capable of taking beautiful raw stills. This paired with its built-in director's viewfinder function makes it really great for location scouting. The operation of this camera is super familiar. It's basically just like any other one you've ever used. There's a wheel in the back, a wheel in the front, or now there's also a high detail touchscreen. If you're afraid to accidentally change the settings by, you know, touching it with your hand while you're using it though, you can easily disable this function. The Sigma FP is another member of the L-Mount Alliance. It utilizes the same L-Mount as the Leica and Panasonic cameras. Should you want to use another type of glass though, Sigma offers plenty of adapters. The Sigma FP also has a 49 point autofocus system that works in both video and photo mode. It'll even let you spot focus while you're rolling video. This can be super helpful if you're having trouble nailing those rack focuses. Speaking of autofocus, the Sigma FP also has face and eye detecting mode. It means it locks in on the face or the eyes while you're rolling. I find this super useful when you're on a gimbal because otherwise it's really tough to focus, especially if you don't have a dedicated remote focus puller. Another feature of this camera is the built-in electronic image stabilization. While it's not going to take the place of a gimbal, it's super helpful when you're doing pans and tilts handheld. Just note, this is only available when shooting in full HD and not in 4K. If you're looking to get that retro Super 8 look, just throwing a filter on it in post is not going to do the trick. The Sigma FP can shoot at 18 frames a second just like a vintage Super 8 camera. Regular shooting modes at 4K include 2398, 25, and 2997. In 1080, it can go anywhere from 2398 all the way up to 120 frames a second. The shutter is also fully electronic to ensure completely silent operation when taking photos. If you're like me and used to thinking in terms of shutter angle and not speed though, you can change between both of those in the options menu. The Sigma FP has you covered even in low light situations. Once you turn on the expanded ISO capacity, you can shoot up to 102,400 ISO. While the camera can shoot raw, if you're looking to do something quick, Sigma offers different color modes that simulate a number of popular color correction techniques. Whether it's a stylistic choice or you just want to capture the most dynamic range possible, the Sigma FP also supports HDR recording in both photo and video mode. Internally being able to shoot and edit cinemagraphs is something I've actually never seen before in a camera. While it's a cool feature and I'm sure plenty of you will find good uses for it, I'm going to focus more on the cinema features today. My favorite thing and why I think most people are interested in this camera is the fact that it shoots RAW. RAW is relatively new to the video world. I was a photographer long before I got into shooting video and I got so used to the safety of shooting RAW. Compared to shooting JPEGs, RAW made shooting so easy. You could fix almost anything related to white balance, exposure, or dynamic range all in post. Moving to the video world was a rude awakening though. Without the ability to record RAW, we were forced to nail the exposure and white balance in camera. You had no latitude or very little when you were in post. This can be especially hard in fast-paced environments like when shooting docks or running gun productions while quickly transitioning between indoor and outdoor locations. It's so easy to forget to change the white balance in these type of situations and shooting raw can mean the difference between a ruined shot and a beautiful image. Shooting flat profiles like log helps, but it still doesn't give you nearly the same margin of error or color correction ability as raw. Even in its completely stock form, the Sigma FP can record 12-bit raw cinema DNG right to the card. As this means basically shooting 24 raw still images a second, it takes up a lot of space. 
Fortunately, it also supports recording to external hard drives and recorders, and that's where things get really interesting. With either an Atmos recorder like this or a Blackmagic external recording device, you can record 12-bit compressed RAW formats like Apple ProRes or B-RAW. Today though, we're going to focus on ProRes and why it's so useful compared to Cinema DNG. Shooting in Cinema DNG literally means the camera shoots 24 separate RAW still frames a second as well as a separate wave audio track. Each clip comes out as an individual folder of images with a separate sound file attached. This makes it impossible to just view on a computer like normal, and you have to bring it into something like Premiere or Final Cut. ProRes RAW, on the other hand, comes out like any other ProRes MOV file, and this makes the workflow exactly the same as shooting any other standard video file, but with way more flexibility in post. The first thing you're going to need to know if you're planning on shooting RAW is you better have a lot of hard drive space. When recording full 4K at 2398 ProRes RAW, there's only room for roughly an hour of footage on the Atmos's two terabyte hard drive. To set up the Sigma FP for RAW recording, first make sure that its firmware and your Atmos's firmware is up to date. Once everything has been updated, navigate to the third page of the system menu, click HDMI output, recorded image output, and set that to RAW. Next, on your Atmos device, go to the record menu and change the codec to ProRes RAW. Now you're ready to record RAW. Coming from a conventional camera, shooting log to shooting RAW on this camera has been amazing. On my normal camera, if I forget to change the white balance going between in and outside, I completely bone the whole shot. With this, one click and you're good. Check out a couple before and after clips to see how much latitude you get when shooting with RAW. That's been a quick overview of the Sigma FP. Thanks for watching.